Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Scott sent me a note about a story that I find quite fascinating. I've talked about this topic before, and unfortunately, a lot of people misunderstand it or they're not thinking as clearly about it as they should. But I've discussed this, that if you own a piece of property, okay, you own a piece of property, it's not just a dotted line on the earth and the surface that you own, because you can build a house, which obviously rises up into the area of, above your property. And so the question is, how high do you own? How high do you own? And then the question is, does anybody else control or regulate that space? And as most of you know, the FAA regulates the airspace over your property. But again, ownership and regulation are two different things. Now, I know some people want to say, but Steve, if I have the right to regulate it, I own it. Well, yes and no. I'm a lawyer. I'm going to tell you that the definitions are different. You can believe whatever you want to believe, okay? But the point is that airplanes can fly over your property as long as they're doing it properly within the FAA guidelines, okay? Question is, what about hot air balloons? And you might go, what's the difference? Well, there is a little bit of a difference, and, and that's what the story's about. So <laughs> out of Maryland, Clara Neal wrote this for Frederick News Post. Trial nears for hot air balloon lawsuit. Couple alleges trespass via airspace. A Frederick County couple is accusing a hot air balloon company and its owner of invading their privacy and trespassing through their property's airspace, raising concerns among hot air balloon pilots and enthusiasts and, of course, just a lot of other people who are fascinated by this. Now, the man who owns the company has denied these allegations, stating the couple can't claim control of airspace that is federally regulated. So he says, hey, look, if I'm following the law, you can't sue me for passing over your property. In that part of the county, the man launched and landed his balloons from neighboring properties with the property owner's consent, and he did fly in the area of and over the complaining couple's home. So he never landed on their property, but he launched or landed near it. Now, the company offers hot air balloon flights in Frederick County. It's $395 per person, uh, according to the website. It also offers private flights for special occasions with up to three passengers. The entire experience lasts about three hours, according to the website. The man said in an interview, on average, the company does roughly 75 flights a year in the county. Uh, the man also works for Aviation Insurance Resources. He estimates that he insures over half of the balloonists in the U.S. Now, the couple who live on Timmins Road, sued the man, his company, and other parties, asking a judge to stop all hot air balloon flights from surrounding properties, and they also want to stop any other unmanned or manned aircraft flights. So they didn't just ask for the hot air balloons to be stopped. They actually said, stop everybody from flying over our property. That second part is what we call a non-starter. No judge in his right mind would ever say, sure, I'm going to grant you exclusive rights all the way up to heaven and tell the FAA to shove it. <clears throat> now, the couple also claimed that the man and the balloon company violated county zoning ordinances for taking off and landing on land that isn't zoned for aircraft activity. And now the question is, what is a balloon? And a balloon is an aircraft of some sort, but it is not the same as an airplane in how it requires property to land and take off. You don't need a runway, for instance, to touch down with a balloon or launch with a balloon. And I know this, by the way, I've gone on two different hot air balloon flights, one in the lower peninsula of Michigan, one in the upper peninsula of Michigan. Beautiful, beautiful experiences. However, the FAA does not have regulations for where balloons must take off and land. Local governments can pass ordinances specifying where balloons can and cannot take off. According to a spokesperson for the Frederick County Zoning Department, the county code is silent regarding hot air balloons. So there are no specific regulations in that county saying you cannot or you must or anything like that with respect to how you launch or land your hot air balloon. It does have regulations for storage and landing written for fixed wing aircraft and helicopters, according to the county zoning director. I don't think it was equitable or realistic to apply the standards to a hot air balloon, the person wrote. Now, since the lawsuit was filed in 21, there have been scores of motions, orders, and appeals. The couple also sued their neighbors uh, because they say that the neighbors somehow helped and encouraged the uh, balloon activity. Those additional parties have since been dismissed from the case. A hearing is scheduled for pretrial discussions, and the trial is scheduled 
uh, to come up after being rescheduled twice before. The case has been in and out of courts at the county level, as judges have told the couple they need to exhaust their administrative remedies. This is something a lot of non-attorneys don't know. And that is that courts are generally designed to be your last resort. And so if there's a process whereby you might be able to resolve yourself, situation yourself, then you are required to do that first sometimes. So, for instance, if there is some government agency that oversees something and they've got a process that resolves complaints, you may have to go through them first. And then if that fails, then, and they refer to that as exhausting your administrative remedies. In January 23, the Appellate Court of Maryland agreed that the plaintiffs had to exhaust their administrative remedies and reversed a judge's dismissal of one of the counts. Meanwhile, the president of the nonprofit Balloon Federation of America said in an interview that balloonists all over the nation operate with property owner consent. If an owner gives a pilot permission to take off and land from their property, the pilot has the right to do so. Once the balloon is airborne, it's all FAA. Now, here's the thing I can tell you. Balloons are not as accurate naming where they're going to land because they do tend to go where the wind blows them. A good pilot can predict where it's going to go but can't necessarily land exactly in a spot. And of the two balloon flights that I went on, the first one, the guy told me, he goes, we're going to land in this particular field near this little town in the Upper Peninsula called Elo, E-L-O. He put it in that field. And the field was, 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 I believe, public property. The second balloon flight I took was in southeastern Michigan a few years back. And the guy said we're going to land over someplace near Milford. Now, Milford's a decent-sized town, and as we got near Milford, he started looking for places to put down. There's a chase vehicle behind us. And as we were looking for places to put down, there was a big field and a property next to it, people, and they were waving to us. And the guy brought the balloon down to where we could yell to them. And he goes, do you mind if we land here? They said, no, go right ahead. So we landed in the field. Now, granted, he had permission to land there, but he got it at the last minute. And if nobody had been there and he put down, well, he would have been doing that without somebody's permission. So the, um, if these plaintiffs are successful in this lawsuit, then it sets a bad precedent. It sets up an ability of a city, county, or whoever to say where you can fly, how you can fly, who can fly over when you don't really own the airspace above your home, says the man from the Balloon Federation of America. So we are concerned about any ruling that comes out from a court, whether it be a local or district or federal court, that affects the ability and freedom of this type of sport and flying. The couple's attorney did not respond to multiple requests for comment. However, the attorney for the balloon company said the plaintiffs have a right to air their grievances, but he doesn't think they'll be successful. So that's where I'm going to end it right now. But there is quite a lengthy article here because there's been so much litigation. But apparently this story and this case has been in the news for a couple of years there. And it boils down to people own a piece of property. And somebody nearby is giving the balloon company permission to take off from that piece of property. When they take off, if the wind's blowing the right direction, they go over this property. I don't know what altitude they're going over at, and that would make a difference. Obviously, if the property's here and they launch and they go across three feet off the ground, that'd be a problem. It's highly unlikely, though. So the question really is, if they go up and they start going across at 50 feet or 100 feet... Is that really that big of a nuisance, number one? And number two, is it something they can do something about? And I have a feeling the courts are going to say, as long as they're following the FAA guidelines and doing what they're doing within those guidelines, they're going to be okay. And so I'm just making that as a prediction. I don't know. So what is happening right now is apparently this case has gotten over the hurdles to get to trial. So the trial will happen. And depending on how the ruling comes out of that, then you're going to potentially have an appeal. And if it gets appealed, then they might make some law here. But I am curious to know what's going to happen with respect to the FAA simply saying, um, you have the right to fly a balloon as long as you do it within the guidelines of a hot air balloon as laid out by the FAA. And so that's something that I suspect that some people don't know. And that both of the times that I went flying in a hot air balloon, the person running the balloon was a licensed pilot. They were licensed to fly a hot air balloon by the FAA. And so, you know, think about all the things that are up in the air that are governed by the FAA. And yes, there is a license for a hot air balloon. 
And so it is a very cool experience. If you ever get a chance to, to, to take such a ride, I would encourage it. Uh, you might have issues if you're scared of heights. But the cool thing about it is you're in a basket, and the balloon inflates over you, and it just lifts off slowly. And it, the fact that you're lifting off, and now the burners make some noise. But when the burners are shut off temporarily, you will be up there and it'll be silent, silent. And you can hear things happening down below you if it's calm enough. And I remember drifting over the upper peninsula of Michigan, someplace between Chassel and Elo, and drifting over and seeing deer just running around down there. I think they were oblivious to the fact that there's three people above them in a hot air balloon looking down going, hey, check out those deer. <laughs> so very, very cool. We'll see what happens. But as of right now, the trial is approaching for the hot air balloon lawsuit. Couple alleges trespass via the airspace from fredericknewspost.com. Clara Neal wrote that. Scott sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Right now, I'm having amnesia and deja vu at the same time.